Now we all know that oysters are plentiful here throughout the Pacific Northwest, but what a lot of people don't know is that these oysters aren't even local. Our own native Olympia oyster was overfished to extinction nearly 100 years ago. And today, Western professor Paul Donnell and a team of dedicated students are working hard to create a self-sustaining oyster bed locally. This collaboration between Western and Skagit Marine Resources Committee is starting to show some real progress. Oysters are awesome natural filters that clean the water that surround us, and they're tasty too. However, over 100 years ago, our native Olympia oysters were harvested to extinction in Puget Sound. Now one man is leading efforts to repopulate Olympia oysters starting in Fidalgo Bay. On the Pacific coast, uh, there's one type of native oyster, and that's this little guy here. Uh, it's a fairly small oyster. A lot of the people coming came from the East Coast and Europe uh, uh, during the gold rush days and they were quite used to oysters on the East Coast and in Europe and it was a delicacy. So they proceeded to wipe out the native oysters in San Francisco Bay and then worked their way up the coast and did the same thing. Thinking that it was an inexhaustible resource. And it might have been if they had left some of them behind and some of the restructure for the young ones to settle on, but they didn't. They pretty much wiped out everything when they took. Oyster beds or reefs form habitat. They form holes, essentially, in structure, vertical structure, three-dimensional structure where other animals live, such as small fish, which are then often at the base of food chain for other animals, such as juvenile salmon, for instance, that feed on amphipods and whatnot. What does that mean? You eat them raw, of course, and you can cook them many ways. Uh, barbecued, baked, uh, oysters with toppings, uh, all sorts of ways. <laughs> That's how I got into this business I like, seafood, <laughs> from an early age, back when I was in about second, third grade in Florida. I used to bring home crabs all the time, put them in the bathtub until we cooked them. Students and volunteers from around Wacom and Skagit counties are joining in the effort to bring back our native bivalve. I'm Kaylee Gabrian Voorhees, and I am an intern under the COSI Prime Internship Grant through Western Washington University. I got it as a Whatcom Community College student, though I have since been accepted at Western. I didn't really know a lot about oysters before I started. But now that I do, I've learned that um, oysters are kind of the cold water equivalent of your coral reefs. They clean the water, they provide habitat, so they're a base point for, for your native species uh, and the health of the area, and it's, it's important. The Fidalgo Bay site is the first native oyster restoration site in the north part of Puget Sound. When we chose this site, it's, it's just a guess as to whether, whether the oysters will survive, uh, whether they might or might not be buried in mud when winter storms come and disappear. Um, the big question is to whether they will actually spawn. And if they do spawn, will the larvae be flushed out into some place where they'll never settle? Uh, so there are a lot of questions biologically. The work is muddy, messy involves lots of volunteers. We couldn't do this without a lot of volunteers. The objective here is to establish a natural spawning population of oysters that can then put larvae into the water, settle around the bay, and reestablish natural populations from a normal spawning population um, so that we don't have to keep putting seed out all the time. And so far, this site has been quite successful at doing that. I'm outside, I'm in the mud, I'm helping make a difference, and um, as Paul said, and a lot of marine scientists, I'm not behind a desk. I'm out, I'm having fun, I'm in nature, and I'm making a difference at the same time. So this is what you do, just count. This is, yeah, just count and shift through. When you get to the, this is pretty thick with shells, and, uh, Often you'll have more than one volunteer 
you know, working together at a time. So you've got somebody who's got the notebook who's not muddy and wet <laughs> to count your, to take down your numbers for you. You just dig through until you reach the bottom of your shells, and then there you go another ten feet and do it again. We've used a lot of Skagit County Marine Resource Committee volunteers, Skagit County Beach Watcher volunteers, uh, a great group, a large number of them have come out and worked on this project, along with students at Shannon Point Marine Center. Uh, students are especially easy, and, and then professors as well, to get them to jump on the train to restoring what we're all enjoying. They, you know, I feel a connection to the area. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, and I didn't realize until this year that the oysters I ate on the beach as a child weren't native, and I feel kind of silly, so. <laughs> if we can't restore resources like this, habitats like this, then the health of Puget Sound is always going to remain in question. So it's, it's really people who are interested in the environment, interested in where they live, and want to restore it and, and just at least continue on uh, at the baseline we're at and hopefully improve from there. I'm going to attempt to <laughs> get away from my apartment so that I can hang out with all my good time friends. And all the different um, buddies I had. <laughs> if Western Washington University is in the recreation program is about helping its students to become professionals who make a difference in people's lives, then I'd say that we're doing something right with Camp Team. I did a couple of them, but I 